Welcome to Fox TV News, where everything is true. Daniel Rowe died from incised wound to the neck, autopsy finds. The autopsy conducted on 8-year-old Daniel Rowe, who was abducted from her school in Portmore earlier this month and killed, has shown that she died from an incised wound to the neck. Reporters visited the Transcultive Funeral Home where the autopsy was performed. Daniel's parents, who were present, were inconsolable. Daniel was taken from the Britain Primary and Infant School on Thursday, June 8th. It is believed she was taken to an abandoned building along Roswell Avenue in St. Andrew Central Police Division where her throat was slashed. She managed to exit the building and was transported to hospital where she later died while being treated. For implicated in UHWI payroll fraud to return to court September 21. The four people implicated in a major fraud scheme at the University Hospital of the West Indies are to return to the Kingston and St. Andrew Court on September 21. Lionel Sinclair, Donnie Lawrence, Romaria Bailey, and Selvona Bailey allegedly collected salary last February under the guise that they were employed to the hospital. Reports are that $793,000 was deposited into Mr. Sinclair's bank account. Some $404,000 was deposited to Mr. Lawrence's bank account, while Mr. Billy allegedly received $224,374. Miss Billy reportedly received $128,000. The fraud was said to have been uncovered last March by internal auditors at the UHWI. Fraud squad detectives attached to the Counterterrorism and Organized Crime Investigations brand CTOC were subsequently called in. The accused were arrested in May and June this year. The police are continuing their investigation to identify employees of the hospital who may be involved in the racket. Four persons are arrested. They were charged with conspiracy to defraud, receiving stolen property, and unlawfully making available device or data for the commission of an offense. They were on station bail. They appear before the Alpha Tree Court this morning, where their bails were extended until the 21st of September 2023. Two men charged in relation to killing of educator denied bail. The two men charged with the 2020 murder of the then vice principal of Excelsior High School, Colin Walker, were denied bail on Monday. The 53 year old educator was murdered at her Greensboro St. Andrew home on April 9 that year, shot several times. The two men, Randy Raymond and Michael Small, are to return to court on July 13. Gordon threatens legal action if 2024 local government elections delayed again. President of the People's National Party, Mark Golden, has warned that he'll be taking ruling Jamaica Labour Party to court if the local government elections are postponed in February 2024. The local government elections were postponed for a third time in February 2023 and are slated to be held no later than February 28, 2024. The postponement was met with heavy backlash from the opposition, who noted that the move was in contradiction to the true democracy. The latter was reiterated on the weekend as the party leader spoke to supporters in St. Anne's Bay, St. Anne. According to Gordon, the matter will be put before the court and he is confident that the result will not be favourable for the GLP. Now let me tell you, if them fees them can extend it again and we are going to take them to court and we are going to test the constitutionality of that because if they are to try it again, they will be extending the term of existing councillors by 100% on suppressed grounds and I am very confident that our courts will not allow that to happen because that cannot be consistent within a democracy system of local governments, he said. He urged the government to call the elections as soon as possible. So I'm warning them, no bother try that again. Call the local government election before the time comes for the end of this one year, which was put in place in February on bogus grounds, he added. The comments of the party leader were supported by former mayor of St. Anne's Bay, Desmond Gilmore, who informed the GLP of certain backlash from supporters. The local government election must be called and I know ask me or ask nobody. Some people are behave like say them own the nation. The place are for the whole away. So if them are planned to do it again, take them think again. Try it for the fourth time and then you will see what we must alter this, he argued. He said the elections have already been postponed on more than one occasion and the people are hurt. Gilmore stated 
that any attempt to enforce a further postponement will only evoke the wrath of the people. Gilmore lost the Limehall division in the last local government election in 2016 and will be seeking re-election. I am very confident that our courts will not allow that to happen because that cannot be consistent with the democratic system of the world. So I warn them, I'm going to try that again. The local government election before the time comes for the end of this one year period, which you will put in place in February and focus from Montego Bay Tax Office to resume operations with limited services. Tax Administration Jamaica TAG says the Montego Bay Revenue Service Center will reopen today, limited business 8.30 to 12 p.m. until further notice. This is due to a malfunctioning air conditioning system, which has significantly affected the authority's customer service delivery at the location since last week. These limited services include collections, cashier services, renewal of driver's license, substitute driver's license, provisional driver's license, new driver's license, collection of driver's license, Purchasing of green and red plates, property tax query, stamp duty processing. During this time, persons may opt to visit the Falmouth, Lucy, Darliston, or St. Anne's Bay tax offices to conduct their usual transaction, the operations of which will be busted by deployment staff, the Montego Bay Revenue Service Center members, TAJ said in a press release. Additionally, at the Authority's Bay West location, 8.30 a.m. to 3 p.m., Taxpayers can conduct several transactions including tear in application, motor vehicle partially transferred, sign out of title, as well as taxpayer education support. Please note that for partial motor vehicle transfer, customers should have the motor vehicle title in hand, no awares, with motor vehicle registration and certification of fitness. Taxpayers are also reminded that several transactions may be conducted using TAJ's tax portal at www jamaicatalks.gov.jm. These include filing payment, property tax squaring, traffic ticket, and certificate of fitness fee payment. TAG wishes to apologize for any inconvenience caused as its service providers work assiduously to rectify the issue in the shortest possible time, stated the entity. For further information, persons may contact the Tax Administration Customer Service Center at 888-829- 4357 toll free or visit www.taxjamaica.gov.jm or monitor media for updates. Site identified for a homeless shelter in Portland. The homeless in Portland will soon have access to a shelter following the identification of a suitable site for the facility by local government and community development minister Desmond McKenzie. This is the location at the Poor Relief Office in Port Antonio. It is the ideal location that we will use to house the shelter for the homeless population, Mackenzie told journalists during a visit to the parish on June 16. The Poor Relief Department falls under the Office of the Portland Municipal Corporation and its compound, on which the homeless shelter will be built, is located on West Baptist Avenue beside the Port Antonio Fire Station. Mackenzie informed that instructions have been given to both the Ministry and the Portland Municipal Corporation to do what is necessary in order to put in motion the work that is required to be done. When completed, it is expected that the shelter will be able to house about 25 to 30 persons. In the meantime, Minister McKenzie, who has long been calling for the Municipal Corporation to identify a site for shelter, outlined the urgency of the situation. We're in the third week of hurricane season, and whilst the forecast is for a moderate hurricane season, a simple shower of rain, like what we have been having over the last couple of weeks, has caused damage in excess of $150 million and is climbing, he explained. So whatever we can do to ensure that we have something for the homeless people, which is growing in Portland, we need to have it done, the minister added. He said that in addition to the mayor and the CEO of the municipal corporation, the Chief Technical Officer in the Ministry of Local Government and Community Development has also been tasked with commencing the process of building the shelter immediately. Please remember to subscribe, like, share and click the notification.